earnings trades uh, strategy that you can use uh, to make money uh, consistently over earnings. So I'll go into time spreads and it's a non-directional one. So again, good morning or good afternoon and uh, let's get started. All right, so first thing I have to do, of course, is go over the, uh, the standard disclaimer. Uh, all signals and trading opportunities we provide here are for educational and demonstration purposes only. Trading is very risky, so you should never trade with more money than you can afford to lose. And uh, neither myself or Right Line Trading are licensed financial advisors, so we won't be giving financial advice. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, uh, I'm going to try to answer all of them if you post them in the question box. But if you have any questions, put your, your name and, and, and uh, number, phone number, uh, or your Skype username in the chat box uh, or in the question box, and uh, Rory will pick them up and, and give you a call uh, sometime probably over the weekend uh, to answer any questions. He's not going to try to sell you anything, but he will answer any questions you have relative to the services or any, any tech questions you have that, that I can't answer here. All right, so this is just kind of a graphic display of a piece of software we use called the Compass System. That runs, I run it on Thinkorswim. It runs on Thinkorswim on Ninja. We'll talk about that a little bit as we go through the, uh, through the presentation today. But the key thing to know about the Compass System is it tracks institutional money flow. We, we, uh, we can tell by using the Compass System whether the institutions are in the trade or not in a trade. And as you're going to see here in just a second, that's probably the most critical thing uh, that you need to know to determine whether uh, a trade is uh, is actually uh, being uh, going to be profitable or not. All right, and this this is just a graphic of the uh, text alert service that uh, we provide. Um, this it'll come up on your an SMS alert comes up on your phone. I'll go over this in detail as far as what you get, but it's um, again it's uh, it's pretty quick. I'm 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 uh, also subscribed to it myself, obviously, but I subscribe so I can see how long the the alerts take to get here and it usually takes uh, from my phone from my phone it usually takes 10 to 15 seconds to get the alert once the alert's been put in okay so the first thing i'm going to do and i always cover this if you've been in any of my webinars before you know i always cover this and it's the key thing is to, to to make a determination of what's driving the market and it's really important to understand that this little graphic here with these little marbles this is a uh, retail traders such as myself and most likely everybody else here and the important thing to know about retail traders is we as retail traders cannot move the market. We can't set trends, we can't break trends, we can't do anything uh, ex except chop around. And if there's no institutions in there, and this big marble is the institutions, if just retail traders are trading, then what you're gonna see is an awful lot of chop and a lot of chaos in the market. Your stocks will just be ch chopping up and down and it's very difficult to make any money in that kind of markets. So you don't wanna be trading when th that's the situation. Now the big marble here is the institutions. And this is, uh, I'm sure you know, the investment banks, Goldman Sachs, uh, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, um, it's Deutsche Bank. There's a lot of banks, a lot of banks that are, that are uh, part of the institutional trading or institutions. Um, and these institutions also have what's called, they have computer systems called algos. And that's uh, because they have desk traders and they have algos, which are computer programs that are written to, uh, to trade um, sometimes very quickly, sometimes for a, for a longer period of time. Uh, and as well as the institutions, the institutional banks, and the, uh, you have other, other entities such as uh, mutual funds like Vanguard, T. Rowe Price. They have billions of dollars to put into this. Um, and also you have, um, you have uh, pension funds, big, huge pension funds, and of course, hundreds and hundreds of hedge funds, which have billions of dollars to trade uh, and to invest. And that's what makes up the, the institutions. And it's uh, our job as a retail trader is made much easier if we can determine if a particular move in a stock is being uh, generated by, uh, by institutional buying uh, or if it's just a trap because it's being created by retail traders. So this is the key element that we need to find to determine whether we want to take a trade or not. If we institutions are not in a trade, we don't want to be in the trade because it's just it's just going to chop around. We don't have any any uh, high expectations of, uh, of being profitable most of the time. All right, so that's that's important to know. Okay, so uh, I have a couple of rules to trade by here um, in the room, and this is for our room and for our alert service. One is we we trade the best and skip the rest, and this sounds simple, but it's really difficult to find only the best trade. But what, we, what we're saying is, we're not gonna take trades we don't feel have a high probability of, of being successful. And we have criteria to determine that. 
And if they don't, if they don't meet those criteria, we're not going to trade it. Pretty simple. Uh, the second one is our objective is not to make trades. Our objective is to make money. And this kind of sounds counterintuitive, but a lot of people uh, think that um, uh, that if if you're a trader and you're sitting in front of your computer, you need to have a trade on all the time. You know, I'm a trader. I need to be in a trade. So they end up just taking trades just to take trades. And again, most of the time when you do that, you're you're going to end up with a, a bunch of little losers uh, that are doing nothing but hurting your P&L. So our objective is not to make trades. Our objective is to make money, which means we have to be patient. We have to be patient to make to make successful trades consistently. Uh, also, as a profitable trader, we need an edge. And we need an edge over other retail traders. Remember, we're not trading against the institutions. We're trying to trade with the institutions. We're not going to take money from the institutions. We're only going to take money from other retail traders. So as a profitable trader, we need an edge. The edges that, that, that I have and we have in the room and the alert service has is I use the, the right line compass system to determine whether institutions are in the trade or not. And I'll show that in detail here in just a bit. Um, we also trade, the second thing is relative strength and relative weakness. Now this is not RSI. Some people uh, know about RSI, it's a relative strength index. This is not relative strength index. I don't use RSI at all. I, I think it's a, a pretty much, in my opinion, it's a, 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 it's a useless indicator. What we're talking about here, talking about trading relative strength and relative weaknesses, we're trading stocks that if the S&P 500, the SPY, uh, is moving sideways and down, for example, and the trade we're, in the stock we're looking at is move, moving up consistently, it has relative strength to the market and vice versa. If it's moving down and the market's moving up, it has relative weakness to the market. If we're going long, we want to have a stock that's got relative strength and we want to have a stock that's got the institutions in it. This gives us a massive edge right now, right out of the gate with these two, these two uh, particular criteria. These two criteria will, will, will give you a winning trades um, most of the time. Um, we also want to trade with the market trend if there is one, obviously. Um, and the last thing is we want to buy near support and sell near resistance. In other words, don't be chasing big moves in a stock. Wait for it to come back to a level that's a, that's a supporter or a resistance level and, um, and then enter after it confirms that it's back into the original trend. So these are the key things that we, we, need, we need as an edge. This gives us a huge edge over the other retail traders. We, we have the tools to, to uh, basically take money from retail traders all the time, every day. Uh, now the compass system, which we're gonna talk about here is, uh, it looks like this on, on, on uh, Think or Swim, I'll show it in just a bit. But basically it identifies the highest probability trade setups while sidestepping setups that look good, but are they going to fail more often than succeed? And what I mean by that is we want to be in trades only when the institutions are in the trades. We don't want to be in trades that the institutions are not involved in because they're much more likely to fail. Uh, and the compass system does this by identifying when the institutions are driving a move and when they're not, as we talked about earlier. So that's important. Uh, it, the compass system analyzes very complex trading information and data and displays the results in an easy, easily identifiable visual format. This is important because even though it's crunching lots of complex data, when it's displayed on the chart, it's easy to see and easy to read. Even for, a, for a, new, a new trader, you can see a high probability trade setup. A new trader can see using the compass system very quickly, whether the, the, that's a bullish trade that can be traded or a neutral trade or a bearish trade that can be traded. You can see that just by looking at the colors. All right, so and we have multiple indicators that we'll go over and show how that works. So again, getting an edge over retail traders, uh, our, our edges are we only take trades being driven by institutions, really important. We take trades that have relative strength and relative weakness to the spies and the cues, as I just mentioned, and trade in the direction of the overall market. And I keep reiterating this because this, these three things here are going to give you an edge immediately over other retail traders. Most of retail traders have no idea whether an institution is in a trade or not. They don't really know. And most retail traders don't even know about trading relative strength and relative weakness. They don't pay any attention to it. They look at a particular stock, they get focused on the five minute chart or the three minute chart, and they're trading off of that. They've got no idea whether the stock is actually outperforming or underperforming the SPY at that point in time. And it's a hugely important element that they don't have. And again, trading in the direction of the overall market trend, if there is one, uh, is also important. A lot of times there, there, there isn't, there's a lot of chop in the market, but in that case, you, you focus on the other two. 
So again, our trades are going to be supported by institutional buying or selling. They're going to be outperforming the SPY, and they're going to be moving in the direction of the overall market. This is a, this is a big deal. Once you can identify this, this is going to give you an edge over other retail traders. Okay. So as we move ahead here, this I, I kind of want to go over. These are this is the criteria, the strategies that I use uh, in that I that I've got. Um, so. What I look at when I first look at a chart to see if it's if I want to if I want to trade a stock, uh, a couple of things really important to me. First of all, I look at the daily chart first. The daily chart is bullish, and I want to go long. Then I'm okay. I, I know I can trade that that stock bullishly. So I'm looking at the daily chart and the five minute chart, and I want them to align. If they align, that 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 passes that criteria. Um, I want to look at the trend with the stock and the market to see if they're that stock has a trend. If it's bullish, obviously it should have a bullish trend. And if the market uh, is, is chopping or moving up, that also means I'm trading with the, with the market trend. But the next important thing is the compass indicators have to align. If I like a stock long and I'm trading off the daily chart and the daily chart is bullish, then the compass indicators need to be bullish as well. Uh, as on the daily chart, they've got, to, they've got to align. They've got to tell me that if I'm going to take a trade, the institutions are in that trade right now as well. Then I look at things, then I look at relative strength and relative weakness, and then I look to enter near support or, or near resistance for a short. Right? So when you drop a, a, a symbol into this kind of uh, thought process, if it comes out the bottom and it meets all these conditions, then, then you've got a potential trade to, to, trade to take. And it's really important that all of these meet. Now, if it doesn't, it's not near support and near resistance, what I'll do is if I like the stock, I'll just put an alert on, uh, on the chart line to let me know when it gets there. But once they drop out of here, then you've got a stock that you can trade. It, we've got to look at other things, but this gives you the the uh, initial confirmation that the stock is bullish and it can keep uh, it can can, uh, can make money for you. All right, so th that's really important, and that's what I go through for every setup that I'm going to take. Um, and this is just the same thing, the funnel method. I call it a funnel method. Uh, it's the highest probability of trade setups. But again, it, this is the same thing we just talked about. A couple of things here. Again, stock to be traded should have a daily and five-minute chart aligned, and the compass indicators must align in the direction of the trade. Very critical, these two. Once you add relative strength and relative weakness, that gives you really, really high probability of a good setup. A um, couple of things to uh, a little bit more, um, a little bit more um, detailed on the five-minute chart. I only use this, this thing called the VWAP, volume weighted average price. If you're going long, uh, the daily chart looks good. The five-minute chart looks good. You're only going to go long if the stock price is above the VWAP. You're only going to go short if it's below the VWAP. Don't be trying to trade stocks long. Uh, if the five-minute chart is the price below the VWAP, wait till it gets above the VWAP, and then you can trade it long. Um, and then look for to, to get near uh, get, get in near near uh, support or resistance. And uh, again, one final thing I always talk about is when I'm looking at the daily chart. I want to make sure that if I'm getting into a trade, there is not any close by resistance <laughs> levels or support levels for sure that I'm going to be running up against. Um, you know, if I get into a trade and, and it's, it's only 20 cents to the 200 day moving average on the daily chart, then I'm not going to take the trade. I, I don't have enough upside room. Right. So that's really important. And the key thing here for, for what we teach in the room is to have patience. Wait for the stock to come to you or make sure you take a high probability trade. Wait for it to get to your level. And at that point in time, that's that you should do is trade it. And we go over this every day in the room. The room is open from market open to market close uh, five days a week. And uh, we we talk about uh, individual stocks that I that I like and or I see. And then we talk about stocks that the members like and see. We talk about which ones could be uh, could be traded and which ones couldn't be traded. So so to, just to kind of go over the strategies that we use in the room. Um, on the, and the alert service, we do straight calls and puts. Um, we do debit spreads using weekly expirations. This is a little different from what most people do. Um, if I take a debit spread on a Tuesday, it's going to have that Friday expiration. So I only take debit spreads using weekly expirations. Most of ours are straight calls and puts, obviously. Uh, we also do the time spreads that we're going to talk about today. This is for over earnings. That's the only strategy I use over earnings. I call it a time spread. Uh, technically, it's a calendar spread. And we'll go over this in detail. Um, I also use what's called a weekly ATM strategy to capture premium. We just finished up a nice one on Google here. Uh, and what I do with that is I sell premium against uh, a, a longer term dated put. 
So if I if I like uh, Microsoft uh, as a as a weekly ATM, I'll be selling this week's at the money puts, and to protect protect against that, I'll have a uh, out of the money put that's the lowest strike price um, out in time four to eight weeks, and I'll take that as a long. So now I'm protected. I'm protected if the stock turns against me, and um, I can keep I can keep selling these puts week after week after week, bringing in premium week after week after week. And there's some there's some pretty detailed criteria that I use for that. I have a video on the whole thing, but it's a pretty nice strategy. Uh, it's it's a neutral to bearish to, to bullish strategy. I do credit spreads to capture premiums. Uh, you probably are familiar with those. And then I have in inside the room, I'll, I'll use what's called the SPY super system. This basically is, is just trading the SPY or the QQQ on a five minute chart, uh, only under specific circumstances, in which case the uh, the stock is bullish, the institutions are in the, the tether support level and the bouncing off of support level. All the major criteria are met, and then we'll just trade it, but it's typically only for several candles. So I don't alert on this type of a trade. Okay, now, um, We'll talk about the alert service itself here and the alert service itself it's it's um it's designed for day trades and, and short-term swing trades it's not an investment for, um, service it's just uh, for day trades and short-term swing trades uh swing short-term swing trades uh, i basically uh qualify as being anything from overnight to maybe two to three weeks uh, that's the longest i usually stay in any trade is two to three weeks uh, so I usually go out at least a month or so on, on all of my options um, or so, three weeks to a month on the options that I take. I do take, uh, for, I take in the money options and I take options that are around a 70 delta. Um, always in the money options, out of trading out of the money options as a strategy is a loser or, or, uh, overall. It's not, a, it's not a profitable strategy. Um, you're going to get real-time alerts on the highest probability trade setups. And again, it's designed for traders who can't watch the market all day or don't want to watch the market all day. Um, the real-time real -time high alert trade setups, when we take the trade in the room, we call it out, you get an alert right then and you will uh, only get alerts on the highest probability trade setups. And we know this by, by uh, obviously what we just talked about. It's gonna have institutional involvement in the market internals or the number of stocks going up versus going down is gonna be in our favor. And then we do technical analysis on it to come up with the uh, the particular trade we want to take, the strike we want to take, and the uh, and the price we want to pay for it. Uh, this is an equity curve for the uh, for the alert service uh, since uh, for about a year, a little over a year. Um, it's it it does really really well. Um, again, it it depends on how much your account is and, and how much money you put into trade. This is based on putting two thousand dollars into each trade that you that we alerted on. Uh, and it, it's been, you can see it's been very, very consistent. It's obviously bottom left. We have periods where we get a little, it gets flat, but but basically uh, it's up about 90,000 um, uh, since March 23. So that's not that's not bad for 2,000 invested in a trade. Obviously, if you invest more, you get more. If you invest much, less in a trade, you get less. Uh, but I have to use some sort of a baseline. So I use 2,000 uh, as a baseline. And that, that, you'll see that here in just a minute when I start showing some of the results. All right, so and here it is some of the results. These are this is uh, the results of the of the uh, the trades that we took in September of 2023. I've got several months here, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. But the the thing I want I want you to be aware of is, and the reason I post this um, for everybody to see is because I want you to be aware of the percentage gains that we we take in, in each trade. I don't want you to think that uh, these these uh, these services you hear about that you say you can make 500 to 1,000 percent every time you take a trade. Um, it's not going to happen. You're not going to be consistently profitable doing it. So this is what I consider extremely realistic. Basically, you're talking about 23, 43%. We did have 108% over here. Uh, that's a big one for us. But typically in the 20s, 30s, and 40% um, gains on, on some of these. Some of these will be intraday. Some of them will be overnight. Some of them will be two weeks. Uh, it just kind of depends. And we do have losers. I mean, everybody has losers. Everybody, anybody tells you they don't have losers, they're lying to you. Uh, everybody has losers at some point, but we have a pretty good uh, track record. So in September, we did uh, 25 wins and two losses. That was a 92% win rate. And 2,000 invested in each trade, trade created a profit of 77.88. So we just kind of run through these fairly quickly. This is October. Yeah, and again, you're going to see the same kind of percentages here. Lots of 20s, 25s, 30%. Um, 
28% here, and a few losses sprinkled in. But again, 24 wins, four losses, 86% win rate, $4,480. Now, the profit a lot of time is dependent upon how the market is performing. If the market is trending up over, over a couple of weeks, then you can stay in trades longer. You can, you can take bigger profits. If it's choppy, um, especially intraday, it's really chop. A lot of times we have to take smaller profits uh, and get out of the trade because we don't really expect any follow through. Uh, so that, that's, that's why you're going to get that. But we had some nice ones here. Uh, his JD for 61%. We had a flat. BG was flat here. But again, you can see the, you can see the percentages. Uh, of, this is typically what you can expect on the trades in the room and in the alert service trades. This is typically what you will see. Uh, this was November. Again, same thing. 21 wins, four losses, 84% win rate. A uh, little lower win rate, but a higher profit in, in November. Uh, and again, 2,000 invested each trade, invest, uh, netted 5160. And again, see the percentages. Notice that they're they're all within that range, pretty much. Um, you know, you don't have too many outliers in this. Uh, and you get a few, you get some losses. This was a tiny loss, but uh, this was a put credit spread here for 25%. Put credit spread for 20%. Anything else that doesn't say anything else, those are just straight puts and calls. Uh, December, very slow month for us. For holidays, there wasn't a lot to trade. Uh, market was kind of choppy, 14 wins and two losses. Uh, nice win rate and uh, $3,115 in profit uh, for the month uh, for just 16 trades, which is which is pretty nice. And um, again, I'm happy with that. I mean, it's, that's the trades weren't there. There was no sense to take. Uh, January. Good month in January, started January 2024. Um, 20 wins and two losses, really nice month. 90% um, win rate, uh, 7505 profits. Pretty nice, pretty nice month for us, uh, over 7,000. And that's again, that's on 2,000 invested in each trade. Uh, this is, this is, uh, you have to remember that you've got to use some sort of a baseline for trading. I mean, uh, I don't trade the same amount every trade, probably nobody does. I vary based on market conditions, et cetera, but I have to have something to be able to uh, to quantify what what the what the service is producing. So this is this is what we're looking at here. And again, you can see it was it was a time spread here, 39%. Uh, we're going to talk about time spreads in a minute, but that was a good month. February is a very very good month. Um, uh, 24 wins, two losses, 92% win rate, but 11,745 profit. And I did start to break out the alerted trades. Uh, in February, um, I hadn't done this before, but uh, this is all trades. The alerted trades uh, are the ones that go out on alerts because we we take trades in the room that we don't take, we don't send alerts out on for a couple of reasons. There are there are some different strategies we we use that are much too quick. Um, also, if I, if I'm putting a trade on like a quarter or four, I'm not going to alert on it because it's uh, it doesn't give the alert service members time enough to get into the trade. It's not fair. So that's why we had 24 wins and two losses here. Uh, in, the, in, in the actual room, 92% win rate, 11,745. And alerted trades, 20 wins, uh, two losses, 90% win rate, and 2,000 invested uh, in each trade, netted 69.30. So we had a couple of big ones in the room that were very quick trades um, that uh, I, I couldn't do uh, alerts on. That That's what skewed that, but still 7,000 a month in the room was pretty, in the alert service is pretty nice. Um, I go into some detail for from May and June here in a minute. I don't have every single month in here because it's it was just it's just the same thing over and over again. But this was the 2023 trade results using $2,000 per trade, um, investing $2,000 in each trade taken in the room produced a profit of $60,208, basically $60,000 for the year. Um, and if you use an account of $50,000, it started the year with a $50,000 account. Each trade would have produced would have used 4% of your account balance. If you put 2,000 into a trade, that would have been 4% of your 50,000. But of course, the, the percentage used kept falling because as, as the account grew, uh, you would have a bigger account, so that percentage would be lower. Uh, produced 120% return on the initial 50,000 account balance, growing to 110, 110,000 at the end of the year. And at the end of the year, $2,000 trade was now less than 2% than of, your, of your final account balance. In other words, if you use 2,000 with 50,000, account, it's going to be 4%. If you're using 2,000 and your account's 100,000 or more, it's only 2%. So that just kind of gives you an overview of how, what we did in 2023. Uh, this is to the first quarter of 2024. Um, trading room, again, 65 wins, 11 losses, 86% win rate, 18,763. Alert service, 41 wins, 6 losses, 87% win rate, 
12, 224. You see the win rates are very, very consistent. We have really high consistency in the room. Typically 85 to 90% win rate is, is, is what you can expect. Um, this is the second quarter, which uh, just really finished. Um, I may actually have missed something in here, but because I didn't think I wrapped up June yet, but uh, this, this was for April, May, and June, 65 wins, 14 losses in the trading room, 83% win rate, a little lower than normal, uh, but still almost 15,000 profits. Alert service, uh, 35 wins, six losses, 85% win rate, uh, almost $12,000 of profits for the second quarter. So pretty nice, pretty nice. First quarter, 18, this was 32, about 33, 34,000. Uh, again, through a half a year, which which corresponds to the 60,000 we made last year. It's it, The consistency is pretty, pretty amazing actually. Uh, over time, as, as, you, as you will see. So I, I'm going I'm, I'm to gonna show the May and June trades, and in, in I'm going to highlight the time spreads in here, uh, because this is what we're going to be talking about here in just a minute. We're going to be talking about the time spreads. And uh, so these were the May trades. Uh, the alerted trades, 15 wins and two losses, 88% win rate, uh, 49.79 um, in May. Uh, on the alerted trades, on the options room, we had uh, 29 wins and seven losses. In the room itself, 81% win rate, kind of low. Uh, 2,000 invested, netted 57.36. Notice the, the the wins, the profitability was pretty close uh, between uh, the, the options room and the and the alert service. Uh, but uh, but again, we had a little bit, a couple of losses in here, a couple of losses that we it took it took us down a little bit, but we still had a nice a nice month. All right. So and again, this was the time spread. XP was the time spread. This BKE was the time spread that went against us. Stock went way, way uh, out of where we thought where it, it should move. So we took 100% loss in that. But again, 71%. And you're, you're going to notice that the time spread profitabilities are <laughs> higher than the percentages that you see on the, on the trading room, uh, be, just be, just because of the structure of the trade and, and what we're how we're do, how we're how we've got this trade structured, what we're using to catch capture profits, the methodology we're using to capture profits. So these are the time spread: 60%, 38%, 40%, 50%, 71%. So these are these are pretty nice. And again, this was the May trades. Uh, this was the June trade. Again, only one time spread here because the, the earning seasons is, is pretty much gone. Um, earning season starts again in uh, in in July here, starting next week. Uh, but we just had one in, in Lulu. But the but the options room in June was really nice. We had 25 wins, four losses, 86% win rate. There's that number again. Um, 2,000 invested at each trade, 75.90 in the room. The alert service, um, 14 wins, one loss, 92% win rate on the alerts. The alerts were really, really good because um, it was. These are really. I'm pretty picky on these alert trades. Sometimes in the room we'll take something that's a little. It's not. It, it's not as as high as some of the alert trades because we can we can um, we can react more quickly. We can make some modifications to it. I can't really do that on the alert service. But in this particular case, the in June. 14 wins, one loss, 92% win rate, and uh, 2,000 invested in each trade, and then 83.16 uh, in the alert trades in June. So June was a good month. Um, again, I may be missing a trade in here. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look because the month just ended. All right, so uh, to kind of go over what the alert service, how the alert service works. Uh, you're going to get an alert, obviously. You're going to get an alert that gives you the stock symbol, uh, the option strike price, the option expiration date and the price to pay for the option. And this could be a range. This could be like a dollar to a dollar five or whatever. Uh, we just finished a, a, a beautiful uh, trade in SMR um, the other day that we got in for, um, I think we got in for a dollar 70 and we get out for 240. That's a, that's a big, that's about a 45% gain. It was a, a really nice, and it wasn't an expensive option, but the gain was really, really nice. But again, you, this will tell you the price to pay for the option. Um, now remember when, when I, Somebody asked about how do I pick an option I want, what expiration date, strike price. I'm always taking in the money options. So I'm always taking options that uh, are obviously, if I'm taking uh, Microsoft and Microsoft's trading at 100, uh, I'm going to take a, a strike price below 100. I'm going to take something that's got like the 70 delta. Um, if you don't know what delta is, delta is uh, 70 reflects the fact that if the stock moves up a dollar, the option will go up 70 cents. Uh, so I'm looking for strike prices that are in the money with around a 70, 72, delta 68, something like that. The expiration date, I'm usually going to go out, depending upon when earnings are, I'm usually going to go out three to four weeks, sometimes five weeks. 
Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, we had Walmart, which we were actually out six weeks on, which we just closed on Friday for a nice profit. But um, but I'll go out at least three to six weeks generally. And then I'll give you the price to pay, which will be, uh, could be a range. Could be like a dollar to a dollar five. All right, and the first alert will, will contain the, the buys price. Sometimes I'll put an exit price in there and wait what once you get filled where to where to set your your uh, your price to exit the trade. But generally speaking, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm going to give you a separate one. Hold on just one second. All right. So generally speaking, what is going to happen is you're going to get an alert with the with the strike price and the the, the expiration date, etc. Uh, but without a, a, a sell price on it, because I don't know yet. Usually, I want to watch price for a while before I put out a sell price on it. But when you do get the uh, the alert that tells you to exit, you 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 want to try to put that in as good till canceled, as what they call GTC, because you want that you want that particular uh, option to be working when the market opens in the morning, even if you're not even if you're not at, uh, at your desk or at the at the uh, your phone, you can't see it. It'll still it'll still close for you for a profit. So you would want to have a GTC a good till, good till canceled. All right. So I, one thing I want to kind of just quickly cover here. We, we just showed some really amazing results. We're talking eight, you know eighty typically eighty five to ninety percent win rate. So how do we achieve this? Well, again, we identify when institutions are driving a trade and when they aren't. This is really important. It's one thing that most retail traders can't do or don't know how to do or aren't even aware they need and they should do. And again, we only take those uh, and when the market internals are heavily bullish or bearish. If the market internals are neutral, in other words, the number of stocks going up and the number of stocks going down are about the same, I'll, I'll still take the trade uh, as long as the institutions are in the trade. Right? So that gives us the, where the trade the best, skip the rest uh, scenario comes from. Um, this is just kind of covers international money flow. And how I do this, I don't need to go over this, but basically it just says by looking, putting all these things together, we can find the highest probability trade sets up, setups out there that other traders cannot find. Uh, and how does this do this? Well, the compass system, which we're going to show you here in just a minute, the compass system identifies when institutions are creating a trend. Well, that's that's great. So how does it do it? Well, it does what's called a triple screen assessment. And a triple screen assessment is basically, it, it uses what's called some people call them fractals. Uh, it's multiple time frames. It's looking at three different things across multiple time frames. It's looking at, at momentum, it's looking at trend, and it's looking at money flow across three time diff three different time frames um, to come up with that. If you're looking at a five minute chart, you're looking at momentum on the five, the 15, and the 45. Same thing with the trend. If you're looking at the daily, you're looking at the daily momentum on the one day, the three day, and the nine day. Now, when, when all of those things are, are aligned, then the likelihood that it's that it's an institution driving that trade is extremely high, in 97, 98%. Almost all the time, if all those things are lined up across multiple time frames, then it's going to be uh, it's going to be an institution that's driving that trade. All right. So, what I'm going to I'm going to go over this in, in a little bit. I'm going to go over uh, some setups that you can actually see on the on the compass system, and I'll show you exactly what I mean by these by these particular. Uh, by these particular uh, indicators. All right, so uh, let's spend a little bit of time on time spreads. This, I, uh, this is kind of something I throw into the into the edu into the presentation here. Um, it's this is educational, and this is something that can help traders. You don't have to pay me to, for this. I'm going to show you what what I how I do time spreads and how to use them. Um, and I do have a you know I do have a, a video in that for anybody who's a member. But we'll go over this right now. But this is how we trade profitably over earnings, and it's called time spreads. Um, these are the time spreads that I've done this year um, since uh, since January. I think I've got them all listed. I, I may be missing some, but basically they're all here. Um, and we were able to maintain an 85% uh, an win rate. I, I've been doing this for over two years now since I've started this strategy, probably about three years now. And again, you can see the percentages run a little bit higher than the, than the, the winners in the room. You know, there's a lot of 60s and 70s and 50s and 100s uh, in here uh, that, that you see. Um, and again, there's, it's basically they're going to run through just earnings. Obviously, we, we couldn't start till the 17th of January because earnings hadn't even started yet. But this is when earnings start. So you see a lot in January and February, uh, March and April, a little bit fewer. 
But again, we had 35 wins and five losses, 86% win rate is that BKE that you already saw. But you can see that the, the, that the win rates typically run higher than the, 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 the uh, regular strategies do, and I'll go over why that is. But again, 50% in HPQ, 45% AMAT, 84% on Ford, 70% 72% on, on XP, 60% GPS, higher high percent, percentage win rates. The win rate's high, but the profitability per trade is higher on time spreads uh, than it is on, on normal trades uh, because of the structure. Right, so time spreads, let me just, let's talk about this. It, it's the only strategy I use over earnings, as I've said before, and it's the only strategy I know of uh, with earnings that you can actually be consistently profitable. Um, and the, the key thing with the time spreads is you've got to put the trade on just before earnings are announced. So if the earnings are going to be announced on Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, you put the, you put the, uh, to the trade on Tuesday afternoon. All right. In other words, you're putting it on sometime during the day before their earnings are announced that night or the following morning. So you're, you're basically getting in immediately. So as soon as earnings are announced, you're going to know whether the thing works or not. Uh, the trade is meant. How does this work? Well, it's meant to capture the difference between uh, the IV crush. We'll talk about this in a minute and the time decay between this week's and next week's options. So the way it's structured as a time spread, a calendar spread, we're selling this week's options and buying next week's options. That's, that's how we capture the implied volatility crush and the time decay difference. All right. The trade works best on stocks. This is important. It historically don't exceed their expected move after the earnings release. What I mean by that is this is not what the earnings results are. This is the stock price movement after the earnings are released. Typically, the market makers have a range of what they, where they expect the stock to go after earnings, and they'll price the premiums based on what they expect. If they expect the stock to move 10 or 15 percent, or let's say 15 percent after earnings, they don't know which direction. They're going to jack up the price of the, of the options by 15 percent or more. Uh, that's called implied volatility. They, they jack up the implied volatility so the premiums get much higher. So what we're doing is we're selling this week's pre, uh, premiums and buying next week's premiums so that when the implied volatility occurs, we can capture that. All right, so again, the, the trade works best on stocks that historically don't exceed their expected move. I have a piece of software that I use that I can see what they're, what historically, how often they beat the expected move. Again, not earnings. I don't care about the earnings. I don't care if they have, they, they beat the earnings expectations. What I care about is how much the stock price moves relative to what was expected. All right, so that, that allows us to harvest the premiums from the options. Um, and again, the time spreads are entered for a debit. You're selling this week's puts, for example, or se selling this week's calls and buying next week's calls. It's going to cost you a certain amount of money. Let's say it cost you $1.30. That is the total risk on the trade. We should put it as one transaction, and that's the most you can lose on that trade is the whatever you paid for the, uh, the time spread. You can't lose any more. That's it. All right, so it's 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 a as of all the trades that I take in the room and on the alert, uh, it has a defined risk. They always have defined risk. You can't lose more than what you uh, what the what uh, the trade is uh, set up for. You can't. There's no. It's not. We're not selling naked calls. We're not selling naked puts. There's no. Uh, there's no unlimited losses on any of these things. All right. So continuing the time spreads. Okay. So again, we're going to initiate these on stocks that report. Earnings tonight or tomorrow morning, as I've said, before the open, and consists of selling this week's expiration at the money calls or puts. I use calls. So I'm selling this week's at the money calls and buying next week's at the money calls. Same strike price, using the same strike, and this will be done for a debit. That's how it's structured. It's not that complicated. Sell this week's call, buy next week's call. If the stock's trading at 100, you sell this week's $100 call, you buy next week's $100 call. Right? You've got this trade structured when you do that. After the earnings are released, the implied volatility is going to drain or be crushed from both this week's and next week's options. They've jacked up the premiums on this week's options and next week's options based on the, the earnings coming out. When the earnings come out, now the market makers know which way the market's, the stock's going to go and they know how my far went. So what happens is they pull the IV or they drain the IV out of the, out of the premium of the stock. So that's called IV crush. And what we're doing since we've sold this week's calls, is we're going to be able to capture the IV crush on this week's call 
because of the fact that the, it's, it's, the call is going to go, go down in price, we can buy it back cheaper. Now, it's going to also drain the IV out of next week's calls, but the IV on current week's calls is much higher than the implied volatility on next week's calls because it's much closer to earnings. All right, so that, that's how we capture the implied volatility crush uh, when the stock comes out. All right, so that gives us one of our edges. We have one additional edge, and that is since we're selling this week's call and buying next week's call, the time decay on this week's call is going to be much more accelerated than the time decay on next week's call because there's a lot more time. There's another week to next week. So the, now, now we've got the implied volatility coming out of this week's premium, and we've got the, the uh, time decay coming out of this week's premium. And remember, we sold this week's premium, this week's call, so we can buy back that call for a lot less than what we collected when we sold it. And next week's call is going to come down some as well, but not anywhere near as much as this week's call is going to come down. So this, that allows us to buy back this week's options and sell next week's options for a profit of 15 to 50 percent. You see, it's from around 40 to 60 percent generally. And again, that's what you do. You put the trade on by selling this week's call and buying next week's call. You take the trade off by buying back this week's call and selling next week's call as one transaction. That's, that's how this works. And it, as long as you've got the right stocks and you know what their IV difference is between this week and next week, and I'll go into that criteria right now. That's how we make this work. You just can't put them willy-nilly on any stock that's got earnings. It's very important that you've got specific criteria that are met before you do this. So again, what's volatility crush? We just talked about that. The volatility crush is the additional premium that's included in the option price prior to earnings due to the uncertainty of the stock price reaction to the earnings report. Market makers are protecting themselves. They don't know which way the stock's going to go and how much it's going to go. So they jack up the premiums on it. That's why you can't make any money buying puts and calls on these things, even out of the money puts and calls, strangles or straddles or any of those things, because the premium is too high on them. Immediately after earnings are released, the additional volatility that was included in the option premium drops rapidly or it's crushed. That's what we talked about. That's what implied volatility crush is. And if you select stocks that have specific criteria just prior to earnings, the volatility crush can be captured for nice profits. And this is what we do with the time spreads trades. And I'll be doing a bunch of these starting uh, second week in July on uh, during earnings, but they're very specific. Uh, and I send these out on uh, every time spread I, I do is, is send out an alert. So alert service members, as well as room members, always will get the, the, uh, the, the volatility um, crush uh, time spreads basically. So again, all the trades will be calendar spreads. That's what the, most of the, the, the Platforms call it calendar spreads. I call it time spread because it's a specific with specific dates to this. We're only using this week's and next week's calls. Again, the time spread is, cap is structured to capture the applied volatility drop after the earnings are released and the difference between this week's option volatility and next week's option volatility. This is how they work. It also captures the difference between this week's option time decay and next week's option time decay. This is not as big as this, but it does add to the profitability in the trade. And again, that's that's why we can, when these work, the percentage gains typically are, are gonna be um, considerably higher than they are in regular uh, puts and call trades that we do in the, in the room and on the alert service. Uh, it's kind of a, this kind of a, um, an abnormally, but um, we'll take it and we, but we can only do it on very specific conditions. Again, the trade is entered just prior to earnings release, enter in the afternoon before an earnings release occurs, after the close or before the opening the next day, we've talked about this. Take 20 to 40 percent. That's probably low. Again, I typically expect to get somewhere between 30 and 50, 60 percent, sometimes higher than that. Um, and we, the, the, uh, you want to have your take profit target. In other words, when I put a time spread on, you've got to have the order to, to, to sell that position, the one that you or buy back that position. You're going to have a closing order on that that's active when the market opens in the morning. Because a lot of times when the earnings comes out, the implied volatility crush is starts to take place immediately after the open, but it, there's what happens is the market makers spread the, the bid ask on the on the options really really wide. So what happens when they do that is you can you can get filled at a higher price than you normally would expect to um, because of that wide spread. But but it occurs usually really early. You know a lot of my time spreads are, are closed out at 12:30 and 30 seconds, or 9:30 and 30 seconds, or 9:31 or something like that. As soon as the options open on that particular stock, uh, then a lot of times we'll get filled on it immediately. 
All right, so here's the criteria for the time spreads. Uh, this is something you want to be aware of if you want to do time spreads. The stock must have weekly options, obviously, because we're going to be selling this week's calls, buying next week's calls. Got to have weekly options. Um, it has to have earnings announced after today's market close or prior to the morning, tomorrow morning's open. The implied volatility between this week's option and next week's option has to be a large percentage difference, like 40% or more. If you've got an implied volatility of uh, this week of 80 and next week of 60, that's not enough. That's about a 25% difference. But if you've got a if you've got implied volatility this week of, of of 100 and next week it's 40, then you've got a nice larger than 50% difference between this week's IV and next week's IV, IV. And that's what we're capturing. So that's really important. Uh, historically, the stock should move less than the expected move. The price now, not, not the earnings. The stock price should move less than the expected move at least 80% of the time or more after earnings. And I have a piece of software that I, a friend of mine has that I use that tells me uh, historically how, how many times does this stock uh, beat the expected move. A lot of times uh, I'll look from zero to 20%. If, it's, if it doesn't beat more than 20% of the time and the closer to zero, the better, then I've got a much better profitability probability of, of making your money in this. So what I'm looking for is a, a large difference in the volatility between this week's and next week's, and I'm looking for stocks that don't beat the price move. Not, not earnings now, don't get confused. We're not talking about beating earnings. We're, we're talking about beating the actual price move after earnings. Again, so you enter the trade uh, in the uh, pr afternoon prior to tonight's or tomorrow's morning earning and close the trade for profit after the market opens if possible. Again, I'm, I'm underestimating these. These are, really should be like 40 to 60 percent. Um, if the stock price moves more than the expected move, you may take a loss or take an adjustment. Um, and, and, and that um, I have some I have some ways to adjust these trades. Um, we had a trade on. Um, I forget what it was. <laughs> we had a trade. On, on this uh, past month uh, on Nike. And Nike exceeded the, the move way outside the range. So we were, we were underwater on the, on the time spread, but the stock was really bearish and technically it set up bearish. So what I did was uh, in the room, we, we actually took a put debit spread on, on Nike. We just did it uh, for one day, actually. We took a put debit spread on Nike and we made more money on the debit spread than we lost on the time spread. So I do adjustments uh, depending on, on the stock and it's more technical. I, I can't go into every every particular particular adjustment I can make, but there are there are ways I can adjust if the stock if the trade goes against us. All right, so those are time spreads. So I hope I hope that gives you some food for thought here uh, as far as far as trading off after option uh, after earnings. Um, I'm going to show you here is I'm going to show you some charts um, of the Compass system and some of the trades we've taken and kind of go over why these are high probability trades and why we took them. This is Tesla right here. This is a five minute chart. This is a fairly old trade, but it, it's a nice one to show you um, how we find these trades. This is a five minute chart. These are the indicators here. This right here is the multi time frame momentum. Remember I told you we have multiple time frames. This is multiple time frame momentum. This is current time frame momentum. This is in this case, this would be five minutes. This would be 5, 15, 45. Notice everything is green. This is a long term trend. This is a derivation of money flow. When all of these are green or blue, then you've got a bullish setup. And this, as you can see right here, that it's, that it's set up right here as it came off this, this little thin green line. That's the 15 EMA of an EMA. It's, a, it's an adjusted uh, smooth EMA. It broke up. The compass system puts in these little arrows. These are what's called pop arrows, a pop out of the box. These tell you when a stock is breaking out of compression. So that's what I was looking for. I was looking for Tesla. This was compressing, broke out of compression and it moved up and we just followed all the way up and then we took profits right there. But everything is green and when I, this is all green, I know the institutions are in this trade. There isn't any question that they're buying. There's no question about it at all. Uh, this was Gilead. Uh, this was a, a another type of candle that I used to find entries, Hike and Hachi candles. I have a whole video on that. I'm not gonna go into that in detail today, but this was Gilead, all green, institutions are buying. This was a bullish hike and action reversal right here. This is on General Electric. Again, everything green except for the long-term trend. But that's good enough for me in this particular case because the trend, the reason that it went to yellow is because it had so much chop here. But I suspect that the next day it would move to the green side. And I had green across the board and everything else. And again, it was breaking out 
um, out of this uh, off of the screen 15 EMA right here. <clears throat> okay, so these are more some of the current ones. This is the SMR that I was telling you about that we just we just took and just took a nice profit in. Uh, yeah, Thursday I think, or Wednesday, not Thursday, but Wednesday uh, or Friday. I can't remember. I think it was Wednesday. Anyway, we were in this for two days and we took 64% profit. Now this is a daily chart on SMR, and you notice that here. The, there's a big shaded area. The compass system produces what's called the dynamic compression zone. This is a compression zone. That's just what it says. It actually creates a dynamically, so it comes and goes during the day. What I was looking for, I was looking for this break. You see how we had a green candle here and then a doji, and now it break up. And this is where we bought it, right here. Everything green breaking out of this dynamic compression zone. We took it here. We get out here. And uh, again, it was a really, really nice uh, a really nice trade for us. Again, a 64% profit. Uh, that was a good, that was a good, and we're just using straight calls on this. Uh, this was SMR uh, on five, and I'm sorry, this was the daily chart in SMR. This is where we bought it and where, where we wanted it because of the fact that it was coming out of here in the daily chart. Here's a five minute chart in SMR. And this, this was the uh, day we get into the trade. <clears throat> we knew it was bullish because of the daily chart. We wanted to get into it on the five minute chart. Here's the five minute chart. Notice we had green, green. Now we did have yellow here, but this, this, uh, when I took this on this breakout, I was expecting that this was gonna go blue, which it did. And then everything was blue and green, which we get in right here on the five minute. Now I really wasn't necessarily thinking I was gonna get out this day. I just was looking for a good entry uh, on, the, on, the, uh, on the five minute chart to, uh, to time my entry. So I was getting in at a, at a good level, not necessarily to intraday trade it, but just to just to get in at a good level, and it, notice it broke above the VWAP. I mentioned the VWAP earlier. Volume weighted average price. There it is, right there. Stock broke above the volume weighted average price. We took the trade, and we were in. And, and on that day, we just wrote it all day, of course. But again, here is what happened to it after we get in, and uh, it moved up beautifully. So that was a nice trade, SMR. Workday right here, daily chart. This was a breakout in workday. Uh, we actually uh, took it back here on this candle as it as it broke above the 15. The VWAP, by the way, does not. This is not something you would use on the daily. Toss puts it in there. I think this one puts it in there, but I don't use it. I only use it on the five minute. But this was our buy as it broke out of dynamic compression. Um, this was green. This was blue at the time. We had to watch it very carefully because we were getting multiple time frame momentum was shifting back and forth. Um, so we had institutions in and out, in and out on multiple time frames, but we, but it stayed blue and green on the current time frame, which was the daily chart the whole way, which was fine as long as that stayed green. Once we get in green or blue, I was okay with that, and that was a 30% profit in five days on the workday. The MDT, this is a nice one as well. Um, again, we get in here, we get out here. This is a daily chart. Notice it's coming off the 15 EMA. I'm looking for an entry level. This went from you see how it went from yellow to blue. So we every, the multiple time frame momentum was already institutions of buying it. Now I had the current time frame as well. So that was that was a key for me to get in right here. And we took a 25% profit on this swing trade on the daily chart uh, on MDT. VKTX, a quick trade here, three days. Again, all green, institutions of buying. This tells us that they're they're in there. We take it right here as it as it popped. Um, probably could have taken it here, but I took it here and get a 30% profit in just in three days. Doesn't look like a lot, but the but the options went up really nicely. This was McDonald's, this was an overnight trade. Um, again, notice the institutions are buying. When you look at this, uh, even, a, even a new new trade, you can see that the institutions are buying here. You can see that they're buying McDonald's. What we were looking for is an entry into McDonald's on the daily chart. Even though the institutions are buying, the price really wasn't going anywhere. But then it finally broke here out of this pop out of the box, which I didn't catch that day, but it broke out of dynamic compression. I bought it here. I held it overnight. Uh, we get in for $8.30 a contract, get out for $11.30 a contract, 37% gain, just an overnight trade. We were only in that thing, like in at 4 o'clock, uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, out the next morning by about 11. That was a nice 30% gain. Uh, this was Moderna. You might be familiar with Moderna. Again, um, coming out of dynamic compression here on the daily chart, breaks down right here. You see where, the, where I got the arrow, this is where I took it as it's broke down off of the 15 EMA on the daily. We took this for 33% profit on Moderna. 
And again, you see yellow and red across the board. Institutions are selling, so you want to be short. Amazon, you want to be long. Institutions are buying, except for the long the uh, long term trend. Uh, long term trend was uh, was yellow right here because we had so much chop. But this break right here, I really I really like because everything else was green and the institutions obviously were in here uh, as far as the momentum was concerned. I'm, these are the ones that are key to me: multiple time frame momentum, current time frame momentum. These are the two that I that I really key off of, uh, and that gave me a nice little pop to the upside here. And again, 32% profit in uh, Amazon. JD, same thing. You can, and I just I show these charts so just so you can see how simple it is to identify when the institutions are selling, which they were here. We had a nice 61% gain in JD. I, I think you probably saw that on one of the one of the uh, stress slides I showed. But again, it, they were selling like crazy here. It took 61%, and then notice they stayed selling all the way across until we get over here. So they were selling the stock for a good long time on JD. Chinese stock, Chinese stocks a lot of times will, will move together. Uh, Baba, Baidu, JD, PED, et cetera. And here's Dollar Tree, took a 25% tra profit in Dollar Tree off of the daily chart right here. We just intraday trade this one uh, as it broke down. Took it right here. Are they, is the institution selling? Obviously they're selling. You know, any, anybody who's got the compass system would see that they were selling. Datadog, again, 21% profit here on this break out of this dynamic compression zone on the daily. Broke out of the dynamic compression zone, we took it short, took a 21% profit. Institutions, yellow and red, all selling here. This was crowd. This was a nice one. Again, we're getting a little bit of chop here. See the different colors? But this was green or blue the whole way. So I was okay with this, especially when it broke out of dynamic compression. So I took it here, and we just took 20%. Not a big, not a big trade but uh, profitable trade. Uh, Amazon, uh, this, was a, this is a five minute chart on Amazon. Now it's, it, you notice we're getting a little blue and green here, but eventually everything went green except for the um, long-term trend. Long-term trend, it, it got a little bit shaky here, but I was okay because again, multiple time frame, current time frame, they were both green and they had been for a while. So I don't, I don't mind taking that, especially coming with a pop out of the box symbol off the 15 EMA. This is a support level right off of the 15 EMA. Took it here, 32% profit in 45 minutes uh, on Amazon. That was a nice one. ENPH, 20% an hour. Again, our institutions buying or selling. Pretty easy to sell. See, they're selling here, all red. Very easy to see. Uh, pop out of the box symbol to the downside right here. Took it right here. Took 20% in an hour as it, it came down. It kept going down. But you notice everything stayed red. And notice over here when it starts to turn blue, you wouldn't want to be in the trade here. When current time frame momentum starts to go blue, half in red, it's telling you that there's a little bit of buying coming in. So you, we didn't we didn't stay in that long, but, but if you were in it, that's what you'd be looking for. Verizon, this was a 50% profit in one hour, and Verizon is this interesting stock because its options are usually pretty cheap. We actually bought in the money next week's options for 45 cents uh, on 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 Verizon, and uh, we took it right here as it broke down below the VWAP and it pop out of the box. Obviously, the institutions are selling it pretty heavily. We jumped in for 45, we get out for 67 cents. 45 to 67 cents. Um, so if you bent, bought 10 contracts, you would have spent $450 and you would have get out an hour later for $670. Uh, pretty, pretty nice profit. Uh, this, was a, this is a SPY super system. I just kind of wanted for anybody who's interested in trading um, the SPYs or the Qs, we, went, we do intraday trade these things. Again, I only call them out of the room. I do not alert on these. But you can see right here, this was the setup. What I was looking for was a pop out of the box symbol and a breakdown off of the 15 EMA. I want everything red. And I, I also had the market internals in my favor to, to the bullish side. So that's what we took the SPY super system right here. I would only be in this for a four or five candles and that's it. And I'm going to get out. I'm just looking for this, this flush down as, the, as this, the SPY super system is identifying all the current selling. I'm spot, but that's that's the that's the kind of trade I was looking for. I notice it's below the VWAP, so on the five minutes, so I've got to go short on this. I can't go long on it. Netflix, nice nice 20% profit right here. Again, you can see the selling went blue to yellow, so we took it. Everything else was red. Nice 20% profit. Didn't really do, drop down a lot, but a decent profit in Netflix. This was a nice Tesla trade here. We took again blue to yellow. Current time frame momentum, then red. 
Everything's bearish. The institutions are selling on the five minute chart. We take it here. It would have been bearish on the daily chart as well, by the way. Um, institutions, I, I'm selling it. I buy it here. I ride it to the end of the day. I get out. And uh, this, is a, this is right at the close for a nice 30% profit. Uh, this was a Tesla trade we took overnight off of the indicators. Uh, don't pay attention to, to the, uh, the VWAP. Well, do pay This is a five minute chart. So, yeah, the, the VWAP matters. It was breaking below the VWAP at the end of the day. Um, everything was yet yellow and red. So I knew it was bearish and it was cut day closing. So we took puts for overnight. We took them for puts and probably went out in two weeks. And we took them overnight and uh, the stock fell on the uh, overnight based on this, uh, in what the indicators told us was likely to happen is it fell from 120 to 112. The puts exploded, a lot of, made a lot of money on that, about seven and a half dollars a contract on the, uh, on the puts. That was pretty nice. And this is the one we looked at earlier, same thing, just so you can see what the compass system does here. All right, and uh, this is, I wanted to show you how I use the daily chart and the five minute chart together. This is QSR, this is a trade we took. QSR, this was the, the daily chart. You notice it's breaking out here. See how this went yellow to blue on current time frame on the daily? It's everything else is green. So I know this is the institutions are in here. So now I, I want to look at the five minute chart to determine where do I want to get into this trade? I know the daily chart's bullish. Where do I want to get into the trade? So this is the five minute chart. Notice the stock's compressing, compressing, compressing. Um, everything is green or blue. And it, and it breaks above the 15 EMA here with a pop out of the box symbol, telling me I'm coming out of compression. This is where I would get in, right here. Now I had to watch this yellow, but uh, it went right back to green again. And uh, it followed that 15 up and kept up root moving up nicely. And this is where we get out um, right here. Uh, once we started to uh, see this, the momentum starting to slip. But I was getting, I was getting pop out of the box symbols all the way up. This 15 was moving up. We were above the VWAP the whole time. Beautiful trade on QSR. All right, so that that kind of wraps up the presentation. Um, uh, as far as uh, what we use here, here's a here's a recap of the strategies again. I use uh, I use straight calls and puts. I do use debit spreads using weekly options expiration. I've talked about time spreads that we went into a lot of detail on uh, for for calendar spreads to capture volatility, crash over earnings. A really great way. Uh, I hope you were, were took advantage of the information I gave you on these time spreads because it's really, really helpful. And you should be able to make some winning trades off of that. Weekly ATM, uh, weekly at the money by selling this week's puts and holding on to a much further dated out long put. Uh, it's, I use ATM because it's at the money. It's also kind of like automatic teller machine. The thing produces a premium each week as you sell. Um, we do credit spreads to capture premium over a few weeks and the SPY super system. So this is what the, these are what the strategies are that you get alerted on, except for this, you wouldn't get alerted on this, on this by super system, but you get alerted on everything else. And we, do, we take them in the room. So if you're in the room, we're talking about this all day long. Again, the, the room is open from market, from about quarter past nine to about four, a little after four. Uh, answer questions, members ask me questions. They, they ask me about charts. We also have a Discord room with a couple of other professional traders that you have access to. So a lot of good information, a lot of good education. We try to do a lot of education our goal here is to try to help traders become cons more consistently profitable, can some become consistently profitable traders, because that's what really matters. We're not trying to make $1,000 gains and then getting then having $1,000 losses. We're trying to get uh, we're trying to get consistency. So again, here's what the alert service looks like. Um, taking trades on the go, it looks just like that. All right, so we've got a couple of a couple of offers that we're going to talk about here. Um, uh, Stephen, do I do calendar spreads two weeks before earnings day? No, I, I do. I don't do. I, I don't do calendar spreads. I'm doing time spreads only, which is coming just before earnings. You don't want to be taking anything through earnings unless it's a time spread. In other words, if if you're in a if you're in a calendar spread, the problem with doing a calendar spread that 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 go, goes over earnings is you're not getting the if you're out past earnings on your on your longs. You're not getting the you're not getting the, the same bang for your buck as you would if it expired before earnings. So I don't I, I I'll take straight puts and calls that expire after earnings as long as I sell them before earnings. But I don't do any calendar spread uh, two weeks before earnings. I only do them the day before earnings, and I, and it's a time spread type type of trade. All right. So this is the uh, this is the alert service right here. Uh, again, you can see uh, there was Fourth of July sale. 
uh, quarterly for 498, uh, annual for 1496, and yeah, you saw what we were making. You saw we make about about 50 to 60,000 in the, uh, a year in the, on there. So it's it's a pretty good return. Uh, quarterly for 498, annual for 496. Um, you can get lifetime too if you want. A lot of people don't want to get them every single. Don't want to have to sign up every year or anything. Uh, 2496 gets you in there for for lifetime. Um, you also get a, a, a month live in the trading room um, if you sign up for the alert services. Uh, and you're going to get a disc, the Discord chat and the SMS text alerts, obviously. Uh, and you'll be in the, you can have access to the Discord room where you have two other professional traders who have audio. We can go and talk to them, listen to them. They post charts, uh, annotated charts during the day of high probability trade setups. So it's kind of an, an, an uh, enhancement. They also post all the trades that we take in the room. Uh, they, they post them in there real time, right, as we do them. Uh, you also get a video, uh, I have about 30 videos, uh, what they call a wise way to trade options. It goes into the compass indicators. It goes into the compass system and how to use it for the highest probability trade setups. Uh, all, of the, all of the particular uh, in, uh, strategies I use are there. Weekly ATMs, um, time spreads. Uh, it, there's a video on Heikinachi candles and how to use those. Um, there's one on the funnel system, high, finding the, the highest probability trade setups, going deeper into the technical analysis. So lots and lots of videos, a lot of education there uh, for that on the, uh, on the alert service. Uh, the other thing is the room itself. You can uh, get in the trading room itself for uh, a year for $11.98, um, 50% off if you use this coupon code. And you can actually try a month for $148. I, I, I don't recommend a month for 104. I, I don't think a month is enough to to give you the the time you need to really make a judgment on it uh, and get used to the strategies we use. But but it's there for you if you want it. Again, save 50% and save $50. That's what you put in the codes. Now again, you're obviously going to be in the live trading room if you're trading in the live trading room. You're also going to get the Discord instant messages. So any trades that are, that are, that if you're not in the room. And, and they're posted, you're going to, the, the Discord you can have on your phone, you can actually just see the, the trades come in there. Um, and you're going to get the videos we talked about here as well. All right, so that's, uh, those are the, uh, let me see if there, this stuff is posted in the chat. Yeah, you've got, you've got um, access in the chat. All the, the, the options live trading room and the alert service are all, uh, are all listed there. If you, if you want to uh, click on those, that'll get you into, uh, into those particular offers. Now, if if you, I don't have I don't have an offer here on the Compass system itself, but if you're interested in the Compass system, you can get it for you can buy the software for twelve hundred and forty nine dollars a year. The Compass system goes on Think or Swim. Um, they will put it on there for you um, at, uh, at Think or Swim. I'm sorry, at Rightline, Rightline Sergio, the tech there will go on to your machine, install it. It's going to look exactly like mine. It's going to look exactly like this. You're going to have all the same in, same indicators, the same all of the same uh, indicators here. It's going to have um, everything that you need uh, that I have. It's got about this. We've got a bunch of different scanners that you would which you would have access to as well. So if, if you do want that, you, the, I don't have a sale on a special on it, but you can get it for twelve forty nine a year if you just let them let them know at Rightline that you want this, the Compass system. With or without the other rooms, it doesn't matter. But you can get the Compass system by itself if you want. But it's twelve forty nine for the Compass system if you want to get that. Just let them know that that's that that you want to get that. So let me see if there's any questions here. Any additional questions? I hope this information was useful to you. And again, in the chat box uh, is the uh, is a link um, for the for the trading room offer and the alert service offer. All right, so here's the trading room. Here's the alert service at 498 for a quarter, 1496 or 2496 for a little rest of your life <laughs> um, for the for the, uh, the alerts. Again, a, a really really good deal considering what the what this room produces. Uh, and here's the room here if you if you'd rather be in the room. All right, so that is uh, that's what I've got today. Again, I hope you I hope you found this constructive. Um, I hope you found the uh, that useful was the information that we gave you for. Time spreads. I, I hope you take advantage of the time spreads uh, as well. So let me just check last minute here. Any more questions? I don't see anything. Again, Stephen, I, I don't do uh, I don't go out two weeks before earnings on on calendar spreads. I just do them just before earnings to capture that IV crush. 
there's good reasons not to be trading over earnings um, just because it, you know, the, the market makers are jacking the premiums up so much on the options that they're basically just looking to take advantage of people who are trying to trade that way. All right, and okay. he's welcome, Stephen. All right, everybody, listen, thanks so much for, for uh, attending the webinar today. I appreciate it. Hope everybody's having a nice uh, weekend. I don't know if you had a long weekend or not, but I, I was off Thursday, but I did work Friday. Again, I'm in the, I'm in the trade room every day uh, going over all these. So again, I look forward to seeing some folks in the alert service and in the trading room. And again, if you're interested in the Compass system, uh, just give them a buzz at 786-732-4656 uh, or send, just send an email um, to uh, support at rightlinetrading.com and uh, they will uh, they'll take care of you. All right. So again, thanks very much, everybody. Appreciate it. And uh, we will uh, see you Monday, Stephen. Yeah, Stephen's a member there. So appreciate that. Thanks a lot, everybody. We'll see everybody. Uh, hopefully we'll see a bunch of folks in the in the room or in the alert service uh, next week. Have a great 4th of July weekend.